Hello, and thank you for joining us uh, today for this live interactive HPE software web event, the Fortify Ecosystem Seamless Integration into the Development Tool Chain. Uh, my name is Scott Johnson. I am a Director of Product Management at Fortify, and I'll be hosting and presenting today's event. Um, I have uh, 15 years of uh, product and security experience uh, at companies like Internet Security Systems, IBM, uh, as well as others, uh, covering both uh, endpoint security, uh, mobile levels of security, and uh, a number of other uh, security-related areas from a software perspective. Uh, before we begin, uh, just remember that you can and are highly encouraged to submit your questions during the event. Uh, just uh, click on the question button, type in your question, uh, and then go ahead and submit it. Uh, we do have a Q&A session at the end, and I will definitely try to answer as many questions as I can uh, during that time. Uh, if not, uh, I'll provide my email address, and you're certainly welcome to uh, send me a note and uh, follow up with any further questions. So with that, let's, uh, let's get going. So now that everyone can see the slide, so th there was a time uh, probably 15 years ago when we really looked at the network and the network being the perimeter. Um, so what did we do? Uh, well, we built walls. We built walls to keep the bad guys out, the hackers out, network IPS, firewalls, WAFs, DDoS solutions. Um, I don't know if anybody remembers deep packet inspection or protocol analysis or heuristics. Um, analyzing the packets to stop the threats. But you know what? It didn't. And, you know, then we thought that it must be the weakest link, and the weakest link really being the devices themselves, uh, whether it was the PCs and then the mobile devices. So surely the endpoint was the new perimeter. Um, from laptops to IP-enabled everything today with uh, the Internet of Things, uh, we really looked at a number of different things, blocking the USB ports, uh, looking at access, looking at app controls. Uh, but you know what? Once again, the threats kept coming. Um, the result has been that billions have been spent, and sure, there's certainly some success with some of the products um, that are out there, but the spend ratio is really wrong in our estimation. And the reality is that the vast majority of the breaches, the exploits themselves, are targeting the applications. And um, effectively, the network and the endpoints are providing a delivery mechanism for the payload that ultimately then exploits the vulnerable applications. The reality then is that the new parameter really is the application, the applications themselves in many, in many circumstances. So the, 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 the time to really flip that script is now. And that's why uh, analysts like Gartner and Forrester and others are really calling on companies to reconsider their spend imbalance and really take a look at that ratio, um, in some cases as high as 25 to 1 in other areas, uh, when ultimately the breaches are not being stopped and thwarted. So with the more, majority of breaches targeting the application layer, you really begin to understand the scope of the problem. And the scope of the problem really centers around insecure software. Uh, uh, and that insecure software is what is leading to many of the breaches that we're seeing out there today. So we see that changing. And what we see, and this is based on talking with our customers, talking with folks in the market, is we see a shift in the SDLC with DevOps and much more agile development driving the need to embed security into the workflow and into the development life cycle. It has to happen sooner and more frequently at whichever stage the software might be in. It might be a legacy application that's in production, and that's where uh, number three that you see here provides monitoring and protection for web applications that are already in production, but the vulnerabilities still need to be remediated so you can block and or monitor for those. Or it might be at the onset of the coding process itself, uh, where number one applies, where the developer is writing the code 
and really needs to have that feedback about the vulnerabilities in real time and uh, addressing that need before it actually becomes a vulnerability later on in the process. So what we're doing is taking the traditional AppSec platform and really driving that deeper, going deeper into the DevOps, pro the DevOps process itself, uh, but still really focusing on helping maintain that agility for developers without getting in their way, right? Because their focus is still on delivering code, delivering the software that their business demands. So from a DevOps standpoint, um, what we're driving towards to help address that really centers around looking at the DevOps and third-party tools that are expanding at a highly rapid rate. There's an old quote out there uh, that states that technology is expanding at a rate faster than our ability to protect it. And, you know, that's really a, 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 a very applicable statement because this makes it important for us to help enable customers and partners with the tools, the APIs, the integrations that they need to facilitate, extend, and accelerate their AppSec program as part of that evolving SDLC. Um, no matter where they're at in that process, and for different customers, uh, they're at different stages of that. Um, the HPE Security Fortify ecosystem covers over 10 research validated integration categories. We actually conducted primary research, interviewing developers, security professionals uh, in large enterprises to find out about the tools, the apps, the the need for APIs and the things that they're leveraging and starting to use uh, in their environments. And um, what we found was that organizations are really working to extend their current technologies and using different tools and technologies that really help them enable their environment. And what we're doing at, at Fortify is really helping meet that challenge by offering a number of the things that we'll share today, whether that's uh, Swagger supported REST APIs to help provide extensible integrated solutions, uh, or building in workflow to our uh, uh, SCA solution uh, to enable customers that are using uh, Visual Studio uh, team services to build static code analysis into the actual workflow. So the Fortify ecosystem helps enable the tool chain by providing additional tools, additional plugins, to really enable organizations to do more with their investments in Fortify, but also get the most out of the, out of the tools and things that they're using in their environments uh, today. So as an example of that, uh, I wanted to touch on what we're delivering with our quote unquote swaggerized REST APIs. Um, and uh, this really provides a, an integrated capability leveraging common language and uh, human friendly terminology from an XML and JSON uh, perspective. Uh, what we've done is provided swaggerized REST API support for our product portfolio wherever applicable. Uh, so uh, our security software center, uh, WebInspect, uh, WebInspect Enterprise, so those tie on the management and the, the dynamic application security uh, front. Uh, and App Defender, our, our RASP technology later this month. So our portfolio really is, we're driving the ability to support Swaggerized REST APIs. And what you see here is an example of uh, what we've done with Fortify on Demand, which is actually available online for customers. Uh, and it really enables the developers to visually see the representation of the gets, the calls, uh, example uh, uh, formats in terms of the actual code itself. So you can really extend uh, the capabilities. And look at the model schema information to enable your organization to take further advantage of uh, our products uh, and, and tie in with your current uh, capabilities 
with the other types of products in the tool chain that you're using. Uh, another example of that is what we're also offering with uh, in the area of chat ops with the Fortify and Demand FODBOT uh, featuring Slack. Uh, the next slide uh, provides a, an actual screenshot that um, provides the actual capabilities within the bot itself or leveraging the bot itself. Uh, chat ops is garnering a lot of interest with engineers and DevOps teams to really facilitate communication and automation. Uh, we also see this as a way to facilitate DevOps. Um, it's pretty cutting edge, so not everyone is, is uh, leveraging it. Uh, but what we're doing is really driving that cut edge, cutting edge appeal. So we created the, the bot for Fortify and Demand leveraging Hubot, and it enables the Fortify and Demand customers to use the bot to do things like query scan results, access reports, provide and identify the status on a failing or passing scan. Um, plus, with other bots that are integrated in, like ticketing systems, whether it's JIRA or HP Octane, the individuals using the communication mechanism, Slack or HipChat, those types of tools, can then accelerate their communications. Maybe you create tickets based on that. Maybe you provide that information so that the developer, in this case, uh, you see listed here, can actually go then and work on the ticket that was created uh, uh, as a result of the chat. So it really accelerates those efforts. And that's part of the reason why we're, we're offering that. Um, in addition to that, um, and I'll go through the categories, uh, for, the, for the, 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 the call today, or for the session, I'll hit some of the highlights so we won't go through every single detail um, that's available but we'll really be pointing out some of the highlights in these different categories. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to share is when you look at the types of uh, uh, ways that you can access our information. So when we look at the Fortify ecosystem, what we've done is we've created a marketplace that really provides one place for customers and users where they can go to uh, find the integration information about the ecosystem, the tools that we have to offer. Um, and it really provides a, a mechanism where individuals and partners can go to, I, to see what's available without having to wait for the latest, the next release. So instead of having to uh, wait for uh, the next uh, web inspect release, we can provide those tools, some of the tools associated with that to really help accelerate your development. And that's a big part of, of what, we're, what we're offering here is the ability to help accelerate your, your, your efforts from a DevOps standpoint, leveraging tools like, and I won't read through them all here, but we have a number of different tools, our WeSwag tool, which I'll touch on a little bit later with WebInspect, um, and really enabling that so that you have the ability at your fingertips uh, as a customer to go ahead and log in and uh, access that information. So it's a great way to provide, to get information about what we're doing integration wise, as well as actually download some of the tools uh, and or get links out to where those, uh, where those tools and capabilities are available. So another example that I wanted to share some insight on uh, and we'll hit a few of these, uh, centers around our ability to integrate with some of the ticketing systems. Uh, so one of the really cool things that, uh, that we've done uh, with our secure software center is our ability to provide GR7 support leveraging um, Apache Velocity. Um, I don't know how well you can see the screenshot, but it provides you with a visualization of Velocity, which enables the ability to simplify the configuration of your bug tracking system. So not just JIRA. Um, Apache Velocity is a, it's an open source that's leveraged for templating. And what we've done is out, out of the box, uh, we provide a template with instructions that you as users and partners can then modify. So it provides you with the ability to customize the way your bugs ultimately get submitted to those systems. And it's a great way to really help operationalize your process uh, leveraging our ecosystem. 
Uh, another great example is uh, some of the things that we're doing from a build server integration standpoint. So in addition to the things that we already have with integrations into, uh, uh, into uh, Jenkins, um, what we've also done is integrated our uh, static code analyzer solution uh, directly with Visual Studio Team Services. This is a great example of native embedded integration for static code analysis that's part of the continuous workflow directly uh, with the VSTS marketplace. So we partnered with Microsoft. Um, we've actually OEMed SCA so that developers and users can add the extension as part of that workflow. Simply uh, install it, run your scanner. You can spin it up or down. It's ready to go. It's really baked in to simplify the ability to kick off status, uh, static scans uh, and um, doing that when, once a build completes. Um, this also uh, provides support for uh, integration directly with our dynamic scanning web inspect. Uh, in, within FOD, as well as static scans within FOD. So we've added an extra level of integration so that it provides both kind of the, the on-prem side if we're using VSTS, even though that is in the cloud, but also with our Fortify on-demand solution. So you have multi multiple levels of integration that can provide value uh, for you within your organizations. Uh, another area that I'll just touch on uh, just centers around uh, Gradle support. So some of the, the different build tools, obviously that's very important. Uh, uh, we have Gradle support, so it, it basically provides um, uh, an SCA, SCA touchless adapter. Um, in this example, uh, you effectively have a situation where the user calls the source analyzer, and the source analyzer will call Gradle, and then it'll run. So the main takeaway here really centers around um, automating the process simplifying the process so that more often than not, you don't have to go in and, and manually configure uh, to uh, uh, your solutions to leverage um, the, the ecosystem itself. Next on the vulnerability management uh, category side, um, we've done a few things here that we believe are, are very valuable and they're in different areas. Um, one of the things you'll see or you'll notice is um, we haven't focused just on one area of Fortify. It's really holistic across our portfolio. So you see different ecosystem and integration tools that tie in with Fortify on demand, that integrate in with SSC and SCA or Web Inspect. So really looking uh, broadly across the portfolio with Application Defender and some of the things that we're doing there with containerization. Uh, what you see here is an example of our ability to import network vulnerabilities to enable customers to really receive uh, a unified view of the risk associated uh, in conjunction with their applications. So whether it's within the application or the environment where the app is deployed, we're providing that context and that information from Tenable, which offers Nessus, Qualys VM, uh, Rapid7 Nexpose, if you're French, or Nexpose, if you're not, uh, and Tripwire IP360. So what we're doing is providing the ability to import all the network of vulnerabilities associated with a lot of the common web app ports, 8080, 443, et cetera. The imported results are then integrated seamlessly into Fortify on Demand with the existing vulnerability management capabilities, so the issue lists, list remediation workflows, dashboards, et cetera. So you really do get a more of a seamless view of what the vulnerability posture looks like. Um, in another area from a product standpoint, I mentioned WebInspect. Uh, we offer the WeSwag tool, which is available in the Fortify ecosystem and in the marketplace. And what this does is provides the ability to leverage a Swagger definition profile and consume the results. So for those websites um, that are based on, um, you know, AngularJS, uh, Ajax, Ember, et cetera, 
what we're doing is leveraging the, um, the, uh, the profile of the Swagger REST API and using that to create the condition to provide guided scans and then audit the REST API itself for vulnerabilities. It's highly efficient and it enables the audit capabilities for those dynamic types of web applications that many of your organizations are starting to use today. So very, very cool stuff. And one of the really powerful things about this in terms of the ecosystem itself is we were able to provide that outside of our normal release pattern. So we made that available to customers. We provided a preview of it. Um, some of you on this call may have actually, uh, or on this event may have actually tried it out. We got some really good input from customers and then uh, made that uh, available. Um, continuing on the ecosystem front, um, obviously we have a, uh, a group of our Eclipse and Visual Studio plugins, both for our on-prem and on-demand products. So we wanted to point that out. Those are still a key part of our ecosystem and we're continuing to make updates there and provide additional capabilities and functionality to help the developers and the teams that are using um, those types of IDEs. In addition to that, um, we're also offering capabilities in the open source arena. And as most of you are aware, open source software is a key part of most production software that's out there today. And uh, so what we've done is uh, we have partners in both Sonatype and Black Duck. Uh, this is an example of our integration with uh, Fortify and Demand with Sonatype, where uh, in our SaaS solution, we provide the capabilities for our static code analysis to get re uh, effectively instantaneous um, vulnerability information about the open source components of your code, of the application, immediately in FOD, and you can see that information associated in the reports that provide you with details about the risk profile of those open source components. Um, additionally, we, and you may have seen our, uh, the announcement on this, we have also integrated with, or have enabled our ecosystem so that a partner like Black Duck has integrated with SSC uh, secure software center so that the open source capabilities or the open source vulnerabilities are now visually represented within SSC. So it provides capabilities and insight both in our on-demand products as well as our on-prem products for customers that need to see that open source view and get a better holistic view of vulnerabilities associated with the code itself. Sorry, you might not have seen the, the slide there, so I apologize for that. This is the actual slide, a visual representation of Fortify On Demand with uh, Sonatype. Uh, the next area that I wanted to touch on is also an exciting area that we're um, hearing a lot about in terms of the automation process, configuration automation. And um, I know there's, I can't see a list of hands for the folks that are out there uh, that are viewing uh, the talk, but a number of our customers and partners are starting to leverage automation configuration solutions like Chef, like Puppet, like Octopus. In fact, we're using some of those internally with our own products. And so it only made sense to start to extend that out to our customers in um, a few different ways. Uh, what I wanted to share is uh, one example of what we're doing. This is uh, with Chef, where um, Chef ensures that you have the latest configuration for your software, that it's always applied and always active. Um, it even helps ensure that if, uh, if an attacker had tried to modify the configuration on, on the machine where it's running, that Shelf can self-correct that and reapply the proper configuration setting every 30 minutes, for example. And um, in talking with our customers, one of the things that they've shared with us for our on-prem products is we really need to simplify that process. We need to simplify the automation. And uh, Chef 
enables that. So it makes, uh, uh, it only makes the configuration changes that are necessary and then helps automate that process. So what we did is we created uh, chef recipes for, uh, and cookbooks for uh, uh, Static Code Analyzer, SCA, and Secure Software Center, SSC, uh, that ensure that you always have the most current version. And the recipes remain, and the cookbooks remain in your control. Um, you can currently access these from our, as part of our ecosystem in the marketplace. And uh, beginning next month, uh, we expect to have those available uh, on the Chef marketplace as well. Uh, and we will be supporting both Windows and Linux uh, for those. Um, so it really provides a, uh, a, a value-added capability to quickly configure, provide the correction capabilities as part of the automation process, and uh, make those available to our customers and partners a lot more quickly. So we wanted to share that. But we didn't stop there. So in addition to the ability to uh, provide configuration, we also know that there is a lot of emphasis on containerization. Docker, Mesosphere, other tools that are out there. Uh, and um, an example of what we're doing there um, centers on our ability to provide uh, application defender as part of the ecosystem, uh, leveraging both Docker and Mesosphere containers that provide enterprise scale and, uh, and deployability for the agent, uh, for the application defender agent itself. So enterprises that are using solutions like say Mesosphere DCOS or Docker Swarm can effectively build and create a secure container image as the image uh, uh, visual shows here. So include the apps, include the binaries, all the things that you need in the container itself, and then provide that so it's installed and that template is now ready and can be orchestrated across the enterprise so that you can deliver the microservice uh, or the application as part of that virtual infrastructure. So it's kind of like a template uh, or a gold image like you may have heard of back in quote unquote the old days a few years back. And then um, that enables the application defender to be implemented at scale, install one time, and across the, uh, the enterprise. So it, it truly removes that issue of having to go install an agent on the server because you're creating the gold image to enable that. And then all you have to do after that, that's really cool about this part of the, the ecosystem capability, is you can dynamically apply the rules uh, uh, associated. So there's no additional need to configure the individual containers. And what you're doing is building RASP, which uh, the analysts have been talking about for the last uh, couple of years as a really key feature or capability in the security tool chain itself to build that in. And then you also avoid any misconfiguration or mismanagement uh, across the enterprise and enabling that at scale. So another thing we wanted to touch on or share uh, insight on is just overall from a, from a cloud standpoint. Um, we're doing a lot of work, as you saw earlier, with what we have integrated with uh, SCA, uh, where we've integrated SCA with VSTS. Um, in addition to that, we also are providing our capabilities uh, in the Azure marketplace. Uh, this is an example of how we have seamlessly been able to um, deploy App Defender within uh, the Azure marketplace itself. So we actually have an extension now available and it enables our application defender customers to uh, enable the agent and protect the applications uh, directly, very seamlessly and easily apply the particular policies that they need and then be able to leverage those uh, in those environments. Uh, again, making it uh, simpler, more readily deployed and building security into the overall process itself, which when you look at what the, the focus of the ecosystem and the marketplace is all about, that's really our core focus is 
enabling those capabilities, uh, starting with REST APIs so that you can kick off scans, you can, you can integrate directly into the products themselves, extend those products, but also starting to leverage the types of tools and capabilities that your organizations are using and at different levels, right? Um, organizations are at different um, uh, stages in their DevOps journey and SDLC process journey. And what we're doing is helping enable that, enable that. So regardless of kind of how far left you have shifted today, um, we are meeting those needs as we have in the past, but also doing that uh, today so that if you are using some of the newer tools like the hip chat and G, uh, uh, hip chat and Slack types of solutions, you can leverage that. Uh, so with that, uh, I know we've covered a lot of ground there. Um, and it uh, looks like we do have a few questions that have been teed up. Um, let's see, can you please provide the URL? Yes, in fact, the URL um, that uh, takes you out to the photo, the vanity URL is right here. You can see that on the screen uh, right now. So there you go with that. Um, let's see, is there an added cost associated with the Fortify ecosystem and marketplace? Um, no, there's not. In fact, um, what we've done is intentionally made these tools available. Now, for some of them, you do need to be a customer. So, uh, for example, it doesn't make any sense to, to use uh, WeSwag or some of the ID plugins if you are not a WebInspect uh, or uh, SCA customer, right? So you do need, in many cases, obviously, to be a customer of ours, uh, but um, we're not going in and charging you for REST APIs or things like that. It's really uh, uh, there to help enable you. And frankly, you know, we want to help you use more of our core products, SCA, SSC, WebInspect, Fortify on Demand, Application Defender, WebInspect Enterprise. Um, so that's a, a big part of, of why we're doing that. Um, can we request new tools and integrations offered? Uh, yes, actually you can on the website itself. Uh, there are links where you can uh, provide requests. Uh, you can also email me directly. And um, it's part of our process. So we have actually created a, an ecosystem team, um, that, which is part of our tools team. And uh, we have a prioritized roadmap that enables us to focus on different tools, whether it's the REST API side of the house, um, or frankly, uh, providing uh, updates and enhancements to our, um, our DevInspect solution, which is a tool that enables uh, that shift left in the, uh, uh, the, the, the life cycle itself. Uh, let's see, it looks like, uh, do I have another question here? Yep, we do. So uh, I, I already answered the question about how how to answer, how to access uh, the marketplace. Um, got that. Uh, does the Fortify ecosystem make it faster for us as customers and partners to access Fortify solutions? Uh, yes, it does. I mean, a, a big part of the reason why we're driving this is we know that the SDLC and DevOps process is moving at light speed. And um, we also know that uh, products like uh, Static Code Analyzer aren't necessarily going to be released every month, right? Our current release cycle is closer to three to six months. But that doesn't mean that you guys as customers and partners don't need to operate at the same speed that we're seeing in the DevOps process today. So what the ecosystem and the marketplace allows us to do is one, to provide previews of new tools. So things that are kind of in a beta state that we want to provide access to, we can easily provide those and make those available to our customers and partners. And as new things come out, as our new and updated um, uh, uh, plugin for Jenkins is available, uh, we can make that uh, available in the marketplace um, before an actual release. So you can have it, have it ready and start actually leveraging it and provide feedback if you would like to provide feedback. 
and let's see here. Answer that one. Answer that one. Does the fortify ecosystem? Yeah, so I just answered that one. So I think I've covered the question. Does anyone else have additional questions? Or comments on things you would like to see us evolve within the ecosystem? Are there other are there other tools, are there other integrations that you feel would add more value to what we're offering here? Please feel free to, to type those in, and I can address those. Okay, going once. Uh, and I guess the, the last thing I'll say to give someone, give you a, a chance if you do have any other questions or comments, is this is a living and evolving component of our overall solution offering. So it's not one thing, right? When you think of the Fortify ecosystem, it's not, uh, you know, it's not just ID plugins, it's not just tools, it's a combination of things that help enable you as a company to get more value out of not only our products, but the other things that you're doing, uh, the other types of tools that you're using. It also gives you more of an opportunity to maybe experiment with things that you might not have wanted to use in the past, whether that's, you know, leveraging chat ops or dockerization of, of or leveraging Docker and containerization. Um, we're extending that to make it a lot easier uh, and more valuable for, for customers. Uh, is there a way to get the presentation and the record? Uh, yes. So the, uh, the actual uh, presentation will be posted as a PDF, uh, so you'll be able to access it uh, as part of Breitbart. Um, if for some reason you are not able to find it, uh, feel free to uh, email me. And uh, this recording will be posted and available uh, on Breitbart as well, so that uh, it can be replayed if you missed uh, a portion of this uh, talk or wanted to share it uh, uh, with others. Uh, so I think that covers everything. And uh, if you have any other questions, like I said, feel free to contact me directly. Um, please note that a replay of, oh, I already said that. <laughs> uh, I was reading one of the questions and tying that in. Uh, but uh, another thing, uh, just uh, uh, know that we do have a number of other talks that are available in, out on Breitbart. So uh, go take a look at those. Uh, and um, uh, if you have feedback on those, also let us know. So again, thanks again for your participation and some of the questions and hopefully you found this valuable. And that will conclude our event uh, for today. So everyone enjoy the rest of your day wherever you may be. Thank you.